Recording in progress. Freedom for people to compete. And democracy has increased the disparity between the poor and the rich. So when the disparity goes on increasing more and more, just like in the Athens, what happened was, now history repeats and history will always repeat. It is not that you will not be able to repeat the history, whether you take the story from Ramayana or from Mahabharat or the thousands of years of history, what we find is that the conceptual realities will continue to manifest. So, this we are talking from the available history. What does it do? What does it tell? Whenever there is a disparity of resources, it gives rise to limitless unrest. In 1970s, sorry, in 1740s, 1716s, 1820, 1840, it is explained the ratio between the poor and the rich people was 1 is to 9, 3 is to 20. But today, the disparity, even though the society has become extremely competitive, opportunities are limitless, but what it has made, it created a much bigger gap between the poor and the wealthy people. Whether it is Ukraine war, or what's happening in Israel, if you see the American stocks have increased, the value of American stocks have increased. May not be all the companies, especially those companies which are dealing with defense. So whenever there is such a disparity, what does it do? It creates a rebellion. It gives rise to conflict. And that conflict has the power to unsettle those who have the resources. Whether it is Jarasandha, whether it is Duryodhan, or for that matter Ravan, they had to be brought down. The names change, but the principles don't change. So when the capitalistic idea creates a disparity between the poor and wealthy people, the socialism comes into picture. Bill Durant explains in his writing that whatever available history, you know, the world has the history of almost for 3,500 years. And the world cannot handle the equilibrium of peace. Peace is a very disturbing thing. I am not saying, the history says, whenever there is a peace, it has to give rise to conflict. And therefore, out of 3,500 years of history, only 211 years are the years of peace. Hmm? Therefore, this conflict which is there, what does it do? It gives the rise to, you know, it is a battle between concentration of wealth and compulsive recirculation. Somebody said, capitalism means concentration of wealth and socialism means distribution of that wealth stealing from the capitalistic people. One is the pride of your possession and other is the envy of somebody else's possession. So therefore, Chanakya Pandit in his Artha Shastra or in the Srimad Bhagavatam for that matter or you take the history of Mahabharata, what does it say? Somebody's speaker is on. Can you... Mute it. So, what the, also. excuse please, somebody's speaker is on. So, what does it say? It says that it says 
that whether it is Rama and Mahabharat, for that matter, any modern history also, it makes it very clear. What does it make it very clear? Chanakya Pandit explains in his Artha Shastra. He wrote this treaty 2,500 years ago. I made a very pertinent point. His point was that Sukasya Moolam Dharma. What is it? Sukasya Moolam Dharma. Now Dharma is the root of Sukha. Without dharma, there cannot be happiness. And the next question he raised, what is the foundation of dharma? He said, dharmasya moolam artha. That the foundation of dharma could be surprising to most people, but the foundation of dharma is artha. And therefore, Chanakya Pandit explained the concept of survival of the fittest. You know, jivo jivasya jivanam. Without, now you can see this jivo jivasya, jivo jivasya jivanam from two perspectives. Jivo jivasya jivanam can be seen from the perspective of yajna, tyaga, sacrifice, contribution. A teacher lives for the student. A teacher empowers the student having his simple life, her simple life. They spend so much of time helping the students grow. Some of the best coach, whether it is cricket, whether it is anything, some of the best coach, they themselves are not very famous people. Take Gavaskar's example, take Sachin Tendulkar's example. You don't find Gavaskar becoming a coach. He can be a commentator. But his coach was not as great player as Sunil Gavaskar. Same thing with Sachin Tendulkar also. Why? Because a teacher, when he or she dedicates their life, helping others to grow, they don't focus on their own self. That is called a Jivo Jivasa, name, Jivo Jivasa Jivanam from the perspective of Tyaga, sacrifice. But from other perspective, Jivo Jivasya Jivanam means I flourish, I grow, and if I have to grow, you have to not grow. Survival of the fittest. Whether you take the uh, concept of Darwinian theory, or you go to Mahabharat, or you come to Bhagavatam, second canto, it says that is how life is designed. In fact, in the Mahabharata, it is explained. What Mahabharata explains is that when a sibling is born, when a sibling is born, the surviving sibling feels threatened. That is the biological reality. The biological reality is that if somebody comes next to me, sitting in the train, sitting in the plane, sitting in the bus, whatever it is, the first reaction is resistance. Or why they are here. Wish this seat was for myself only. Right? Like sometimes when people travel in the plane, they immediately go and see the empty three seats so that they can lie down, sleep, long flight. And somebody comes there. And when they see, oh my God, they are here. It is their seat. You know, they booked it. But one who is sleeping there, he feels, oh my God, why they are here. So the biological resistance or the resistance caused by I need to be more fit than others is a reality of this Srishti. In fact, Bhishma is speaking this to Yudhishthira Maharaj. You know, if you are born in an ordinary family, the brothers can stay together. But if you are born in a royal family, in the wealthy family, and every child becomes your competitor. So from the biological perspective, it is the survival of the fittest. And from the cultural perspective, it is the cooperation by the fittest. Only when they cooperate, they grow. What is happening in uh, Israel, Palestine? There is such a diverse opinion. In fact, extreme opinion from the people. 
Some are supporting the Israeli cause. Some are supporting the Palestine cause. Right? Who is right? Whoever gives the best of the narrative, they stay and they grow. You know what? As the Israel conflict is happening, few hundred people are died. But in Afghanistan, there was a massive earthquake. More than 3,000 people died. So therefore, whose death it is, that also defines based upon who has the greatest power to give the narrative. Right? It is explained that Hitler killed about 500,000, right? Or I think six, uh, 60 lakh Jews, right? Not 500,000, 60 lakh Jews. But Pol Pot, he killed almost 2 crore people. The American people. But their story is not so much in the forefront in fact, many people don't even know this person. Therefore, please understand, this is the hard reality of life. If you are resourceful, if you are good at narrations, if you tell your story better than others, then your story becomes the truth. Therefore, what does Chanakya Pandit say? 2500 years ago, even Sri Krishna told the Pandavas the same principle. Chanakya picked up from there only. What is it? It is nothing but if you are fit through your resources, then you basically cause your own growth. And based upon your own growth, you can actually make others also grow. In one, in one place, Chanakya Pandit explains. Just see the beauty of integration, right? Like what you see in the narratives of Indian politics, that whoever has grown, the big business family, as much they grow, they are called as culprits. They take the names of this business family, that business family, they are growing. That means they are, you know, hand in gloves with the government. They are making more money. You know, ye chor hai, wo chor hai, sab chor hai, right? So Chanakya Pandit, such a brilliant concept he brings out because resources are important. He says that one should understand traders by nature cheat. Hmm? Traders by nature, they cheat. So what do you do with that now? Very interesting. He said, traders by nature, they cheat. But because they are a trader, it is the responsibility of the state to provide limitless facilities for them to expand their business. Hmm? And take care of the cheating propensity. But do not destroy the capacity to increase the resources. Because every citizen who increases resources becomes the contributor to the state. In fact, he also mentions in his Artha Shastra, he said, if you find there is a civil suit against the trader, against the businessman, you may have to seal his property also. But do not take away his opportunity to continue to be in business. Right? Because the trader is a cheat, how many traders will you place in the imprisonment? Just like in the, in the Vedic context, in the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, we see Indra has been displayed, portrayed as someone who keeps on making mistakes. Right, he does this problem, he creates that problem, he sends rains to Vrindavan, right, he takes away somebody else's resources, he just chases somebody else away, right. Even with Sri Krishna, Indra performed that activities, but you never find Indra has been dislodged by Lord Vishnu, Indra has been dislodged, dislodged by Lord Brahma. Why they don't do it? Many times people ask this question. 
अरे इतना सारा हरकते करता है उसको रखते क्यों है यू नो हिज मिस्टेक्स आर देर बट इज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इज मच ग्रेटर देन इज मिस्टेक देर फॉर टेकिंग अवे ऑल द रिसोर्सेस फ्रॉम हिम इज नॉट अ वेरी प्रोडक्टिव थिंग दिस वॉज कंसिड बाय चाणक्य टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इयर्स अगो right you can put them in the jail you can file a case against them but you don't have the right stopping their business completely seal their property it's okay seal their money is okay seal their house is okay but don't seal the capacity to generate resources okay this is again based upon what the historical reality we discuss from the chanakya's principle of arthashastra next when you see the mahabharat what does mahabharat say there is a beautiful discussion between yudhishthira maharaj and yaksha no i read that three day session on yaksha prashna it's a profound conversation between yudhishthir and yaksha and yaksha asked one question he said what is the death of a human being and what is the death of a state he asked many questions but here we are focusing on money and we'll come to the mental health also in this regard you'll see the connection also he said the death of a person is caused by poverty daridrata hi uska mrityu hai mrityu ka karan it is not that death is the uh, the the poverty is cause of death in fact poverty itself is death and he said the bad governance arajakata arajakata araja arajakata bad governance is the death of a state go and visit congo you will understand what it means not having the government then yudhishthira maharaj explains another very profound concept he says what is that which is one of the greatest you know disease and yudhishthira maharaj said one of the greatest disease is envy irsha dvesh and what is the envy most of the time the envy is born out of seeing some people having the resources and others not having the resources and therefore even some materialistic mention you know what is socialism socialism is envy of the rich and therefore they have this stupid idea that let us collect all the resources of everybody and distribute everyone equally you can't force somebody else's resources in france at one point of time one socialistic leader decided to charge 70% income tax on the specially wealthy people you know those who are making higher bracket what do you think next happened some of these wealthiest people they basically changed their citizenship only So because they are not willing to pay seventy percent of their hard earned money, however they earn, they didn't want the government to take that much of money, so they had to change that law, right? So therefore, the point here, Yudhishthira Maharaj is saying that whenever there is a disparity, that will give rise to envy, and that envy is very much connected to disparity of money with mental health. Yudhishthira Maharaj, when he performed his Rajasuya sacrifice. Now Krishna gave different family members of Yudhishthira Maharaj different services to help the you know smooth function of the Rajasuya sacrifice. And you know what Sri Krishna did to Duryodhan and Karna. karna happened to be so called charitable person so he said perform the act of giving things to 
the guest who come to Indraprastha. And what service was given to Duryodhan? Duryodhan was given an important service of collecting all the gift Yudhishthira Maharaj received. Because he had to be used as a fulcrum, he has to be used for the future Dharma Stapanartaya. So when Duryodhan was collecting all the resources which was coming for the Pandavas, he was burning with envy. He comes back to his father Dhritarashtra and narrates all the resources collected by the Pandavas. And he says, my dear father, since then I have not experienced any sleep in my life. I want all their wealth by animals, hook or crook. And Duryodhan makes a very interesting statement because his father tried to satisfy him. His father tried to pacify him. His father tried to tempt him. But Duryodhan said, he said, my dear father, satisfaction is the enemy of progress. You may say that is nonsense statement. Duryodhan said, he said that statement with an unhealthy attitude. In the Mahabharat, I wrote a book called as Bani and Mahabharat. Very interesting compilation based upon Ramayana and Mahabharat and certain Western philosophers also. Very interesting point, Duryodhan said. And the same principle is spoken by Lakshmi Devi to Rukmini when Rukmini asked this question. My dear Lakshmi, where do you reside? What is the place you reside? She gives many examples where she resides. And one of the examples she says, I reside in that place where people are not satisfied. If you are satisfied, I don't come there. She said, satisfaction is the enemy of growth. Very contradictory what we have heard all this time. You know, one has to be satisfied. One should, one, one should not be greedy. One should be happy with whatever one has. But here you ask Lakshmi Devi the question of where do you reside? Where do you expand? Where do you stay longer? So she says, if you're satisfied, then I don't grow. But if you have a hunger, if you have an ambition and you work hard, then you have a creativity, then you have imagination, then you put your efforts in growing in that, then certainly I come there. Ah, how do I stay longer? She explains that also. We'll come to that point also. So the point we are discussing that envy is caused by disparity between those who have and those who don't have. And Yudhishthira Maharaj explained this very clearly. Hmm? And when he is explaining this, what does it indicate? It indicates that if you want to grow, if you want to contribute to yourself, you cannot blame your chart. You cannot blame your past. You cannot blame your surrounding. You have to take the responsibility of your own growth in the Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, Krishna told Arjun, you know, in the sixth in the eighth chapter, Banduratmatmanasta Enatmavatmana. Right? He said, very mind, the very mind when it is controlled, it becomes the best of the friend. And when that very mind is not controlled, become the worst of the enemy. Nobody is responsible for that matter. I am responsible for my growth. Yes, I have a story. You have a story. Everybody has their story about what happened for them. Being cheated, being exploited, being abused. All that requires justice. You need to have justice, no doubt. You need to punish the culprits. But the punishment of the culprit may give you some relief. But punishment of the culprit does not automatically give you prosperity. That prosperity has to be earned. 
that prosperity has to be worked upon. Right? So therefore, when we see wealth, when it is not understood properly, frustration caused by lack of it and depression caused because of it. Once again, we experience frustration because there is no wealth. But then we experience depression because we have wealth. Because that wealth, what we have and we don't have, has basically no connection to the wisdom of life. When there is no connection to wisdom of life, only connection to having it or not having it, one gives rise to depression, one gives rise to frustration. Hmm? And we see that what happened in Karnataka, what happened many years ago, uh, one of the government provided this concept of, you know, we are providing free food, free grains, free traveling. This is one of the greatest crime you can commit against the potential people who have all the capacity to grow. Somebody wrote an article when they brought the food security bill. He said, this bill, food security bill, is it pro-poor or is it pro-poverty? So that man concluded this bill is not pro-poor because it doesn't empower them to stand on their feet and grow nicely. This bill is pro-poverty. It doesn't allow people to take responsibility. It only makes them envy of those who have and it makes them complacent for whatever is getting from the state. So then what is the solution? Yes, Srila Prabhupada also mentioned, quoting Chanakya only, that all your good qualities, whatever good qualities you have, they are all destroyed because Daridra, Guna, Dosha, Rasha, Nashi, Daridrata, it destroyed the collection of all the good qualities. And therefore, the Dharmic capitalism if you study our Dharma Shastras, there is Dharma, there is Artha, and there is what? Then there is a Kama also. What does it do? It expl explains to us that, again, the same principle, Daridrata, destroys all the good qualities you have. Therefore, the Bhagavan Avatara appears in this world. Why does he appear? He appears for simple reason. Yada yadai dharmasya glani. Right? Because shraddha is very personal. And one cannot get rid of shraddha. You can have a tamogun shraddha. You can have a rajogun shraddha. You can have a sattvogun shraddha. But you cannot avoid shraddha. One may say, I don't believe in God. But you will believe in science. One may say that I don't believe in God. He may believe in his own, you know, ordinary person, human being here and there. Right? One may not believe in the, the neutral power of Prakriti. Oh, I don't believe that Prakriti is neutral. You know, I don't believe. But you'll believe something. Because one cannot stay without the Shraddha. You may feel, okay, I'm going to survive tomorrow. You need to have some Shraddha. So Shraddhas are rather than cancelling they are divided into three categories. Sat Guna Shraddha, Rajaguna Shraddha and Tamoguna Shraddha. Right? So therefore, Sri Krishna, Sri Ramachandra, they don't appear for establishing Shraddha. They appear for establishing Dharma. And what is Dharma? Dharma is nothing but stability. What kind of stability? Stability of your physical, mental, intellectual and emotional self which also has the component of adhyatmic self it allows dharma allows to create a stable society yudhishthira maharaj will be appointed as the king bharat when he is appointed as the king sri ramachandra is extremely peaceful 
when he comes back, he knows that Bharat is going to offer it back. So there is a transparency. Transparency is there or transfer of power is there properly. So that does not create any trouble. So whenever that disposition happens, that trouble happens in regards to transfer of the power, like Duryodhan captured the Pandavas, what that did, that created a disruption. Duryodhan charged advanced tax for 10 years. Right? He was taxing his people advanced for 10 years. There was a perpetual disruption. And therefore, the Pandavas had to come to become the survival of the fittest, take away the control from Duryodhan to themselves, expand the resources, and help many people to develop their own resources. Yudhishthir alone, for that matter, sponsored 60,000 students, gave them education free of cost. When you give free of education to the capable student, potential children, they become loyal to you. And what kind of a loyalty? Not emotional driven. Gratitude emotion is there. But their gratitude, their loyalty is based upon adding more values to your state. And therefore, Chanakya says, everybody is a potential contributor. Even a person who would receive the death penalty, he would say, don't give them death just like that. Make them do something tangible. And what would they, what would they do? They would be used for creating a treasure, the secret treasury. Sometimes they were used as the, you know, basically they were used as the kavach on the forefront. Right? For him and for that matter for everybody, seeing from the efficiency perspective and the hard perspective, we'll come to that. From the efficiency perspective, from the resources perspective, Chanakya considered everybody will contribute, including those who have received the death penalty to open a secret treasury and hang them or put them in the front light in the battlefield. They become the front line battle soldiers like a kavach. When you don't know the enemy's capacity, capability, so put your people who are about to be given death penalty. So at least for the sake of their nation, they'll get some credit. So nobody is useless, according to Chanitkya. Right? To such an extent, he says the best secret agents the best secret agents are those who are completely orphans. Those who don't have their father. Those who have not experienced their mother's loss. They are completely orphaned. So Chanakya suggested in his Artha Shastra to provide a facility for them to give them such a affection for Rashtra, for their state, for their Sanskriti. Right? So when they develop that affection, they have nothing to look back. They are the best of the secret agent doing such a contribution to their country. Right. So therefore, here we see, when you see that everybody the potential to contribute. Therefore, in our Sanatan Dharma, we see that people, those who worked under others, their number is always less. Whether it is a cobbler, whether it is a barber, whether it is somebody who would clean your place, they were never a full-time workers. They would decide when to come. Right? In the Bhagavatam purport, Srila Prabhupada explains what causes pain? One of the greatest pain is that over-dependence on others' mercy. And therefore the society, Chanakyan society, Mahabharata society, wanted to minimize the number of people who are dependent. Minimize the number of people who are working for others. 
and maximize the number of people who are responsibly independent. There is one technologist in America, Indian guy. He makes a very good statement. He says job and drug, they fall in the same category. Job and drug, they fall in the same category because the dependence factor makes them falsely secure. When they are falsely secure, but the growth is not happening, at some point of time, they are disturbed. Oh, I don't have this much. They have. And that is what Karl Marx, Lenin, and the Socialistic Party, the Communist Party, exploited the sentiment of the dissatisfaction amongst the worker. Of course, we are not saying that the capitalists were saintly people. We are not talking about them. As Chanakya, in the very beginning, only we mentioned, cannot be trusted. But by providing certain facilities for them, they can contribute. You create certain system so that they are providing proper resources. But still, still, unless that spiritually devout and dharmically alert, it will give rise to kind of unrest. Therefore, Lord Ramachandra is telling it to Bharat. In the Ramayana, when they met with each other in, in, uh, in our uh, Chitrakut, Lord Ramachandra told Bharat, my dear Bharat, you know what? He said, it doesn't matter how much your citizens love you. Please hear this carefully. The love of a subordinate or love towards the subordinate by the Swami is not the only thing which sustains. Are you rewarding them for their commitment, their dedication and their contribution? If they have worked eight hours, is there is an appropriate judicious remuneration to given to them. They could be dharmic people. They could be ethical people. They could have moral values also. But still Lord Ramachandra is telling Bharat, if it is not judicious to their work, it will give rise to rebel. There has to be reciprocation. If there is no reciprocation, it gives rise to you know, revolution. It gives rise to disruption. It gives rise to great battle between the rich and the poor. And therefore, when we study our money concept, Narad Muni in the Mahabharat, I have written one chapter in that also. Narad Muni gave such a brilliant solution to the Pandavas. What is the solution he gave? He said, look my dear Pandavas, earning has to be there. Maintaining your wealth by growing it has to be there. And therefore, why do you think Duryodhana was not happy to give five villages to the Pandavas? It was not that he was stupid. You know, he was so stupid. He was, in one sense, more than stupid, he was very arrogant. But he was also very astute. He was very alert. He was very politically, you know, knew that giving five villages to the Pandavas is the beginning of destroying my own country. Because the Pandavas, at the end of the day, are Kshatriyas. They will not be satisfied with five villages. They will expand that from 5 to 50. They'll expand from 50 to 500. They'll expand from 500 to 5,000 villages. He knew that very clear. So putting that option to Duryodhana Sri Krishna was a master stroke card he played. If he says, no, I will not give you, then Duryodhana is exposed very badly. But if Duryodhana gives it, the Pandavas will get something to grab something to expand their kingdom. But so therefore, Duryodhana chose whether they stay or I stay. Huh? Of course, Krishna had given another option to Duryodhana, which was very difficult for him to execute, to work with the Pandavas, to cooperate with the Pandavas, accept the culture of cooperation 
but Duryodhan never grew beyond the biological reality of I will exist and you cannot exist. Right? So therefore, understanding this principle is very important. And last few minutes we will conclude based upon the teachings of the Mahabharata only. And also there were some stoic philosophers. This was pre-Christians. And they conceived something which is what our Mahabharata Ramayana teaches us. They said there are three things. These are the three realities of life. What are the three realities of life? The first reality of life is that there is a desire. Like everybody has a desire. It doesn't matter whether you are spiritualist, materialist, whatever. You know, everybody wants to grow. Through social media, through Instagram, all resources, right? So why you want to grow, that's a different subject matter. But I want to grow is the reality. So therefore they said, desire is a universal principle for everybody. No exception. Second, because there is a desire, there is appropriate kriya, action. Right? If there is a big gap between the desire and the action, it gives rise to nightmare. It gives rise to envy. It gives rise to unfulfilled expectation. It gives rise to robbery. Right? If there is a desire and there is an appropriate action, that gives rise to growth. So accepting the desire, accepting the action is the third principle. Desire, action and acceptance of this previous two principles. So based upon these two ideas, they give four dispositions. What are these four dispositions they give? The four dispositions are, now this is the reality. The four dispositions are, the first disposition is courage. Sahas. Will Durant in his book, he explains, it doesn't matter how good a civilization you are. It doesn't matter how refined civilization you are. It doesn't matter how, you know, aesthetic civilization you have. But do you have a courage? Hmm? Are you willing to fail to pass? Are you willing to be beaten to be victorious? And if you see the modern civilization, especially young people, they do not have the courage to face the realities of life. They would be happy to accept the cause is spiritual. You know, one should be very forgiving. One should not bargain. One should not do this. Why do you think they say that? There could be a component of becoming a refined people. But more than becoming a refined people, there is a component of fear. Right? Like somebody said, this world is created with lot of unfairness. This world is full of unfairness, therefore accept it. That is the method of an advanced yogi or a compromised cowardice person. Generally the second one, cowardice person. But the courageous person will say, yes, there are many unfair things in world and therefore bargain. That's what Krishna taught the Pandavas. That's what Lord Ramachandra tried to teach Ravan, that's what Vibhishan tried to teach Ravan. But Ravan did not. Right? He wanted a bargain where nobody exists other than himself. Therefore, courage is the first principle. And what is courage means? Courage means doing something positive and secondly, while doing the positive, experiencing the reversal. Breaking down. Going down. Business collapsing. Job not getting. Relationship breaking down. He says, you don't have a choice then to be a courageous. That is the first principle, first disposition. And the second disposition 
is the disposition of wisdom. Do not assume anything. Right? When you assume things, right? M.K. Gandhi wrote a letter to Louis Pasteur. You can open and see that. When the Germans attacked the Brits, he wrote this letter saying that don't fight them back. I give you the weapon of non-violence wherein even though you lose your cities, lose your places, lose your people, but you don't retaliate. So Louis Pasha wrote him back. He said, what are you teaching? You are supposed to teach the art of living but you are teaching the art of dying. So this very poetic, idealistic ideology, they don't exist anywhere in the Shastra. They don't have an existence. Right? So therefore, courage along with the wisdom, Vigyan, studying the history, studying the history of economics, studying the Shastra also, studying Artha Shastra also, it makes it very clear if you're not courageous, if you don't have a wisdom, there is lesser chance of your growth. And again, on top of that, if you say, oh, this is my destiny, it's not your destiny. You know, the karma can be changed. Therefore, the word karma means act. The word karma also means past. Right? Whatever we have accumulated our past, but also it means action. So courage and wisdom. And third, they said moderation. That whichever civilization is moderate in its ambition, Indriya Niyantran doesn't mean Indriya Nishkriyata. Sense control doesn't mean cutting of the senses, cutting of the desires, cuttings of the fulfillment of the living entities. You don't find that appropriate utility of the senses. Just like when you are driving best of the car, whether it is best of the car or ordinary car, every car has a facility to speed up to 20 kilometers per hour. But along with that, there will also have brake. There will also have clutches. There will also have steering wheel. Right? It only does not come with the speed. It also comes with the brake. Just like Chanakya Pandit told, traders have the cheating propensity. It doesn't mean that you close the business opportunity, but at the same time, they can help you make wealth. Help them to make wealth and help them to become not such a cheat. So brake is there, clutch is there. You run your car, but in a controlled way. Right? That is called moderation. Yuktahara, Yukta Vihara. One of the craziest principle or the reality of this world is that because people had large relationship, you know, there were many mouths to feed and only few people are working. So people started scattering here, scattering there everywhere. Are we need to move out. We need to move out. Go to America, go to Europe, go to cities to develop our resources. So large family with poverty made them break down, go everywhere. Right? So there was a pain of poverty. Now there is a pain of poverty caused by lack of relationships. There is a daridrata of wealth. Now there is a daridrata of relationships. Right? Husband, wife and a child looking at each other doesn't matter how great one is that will gives rise to frustration boring you know so poverty had the prosperity of relationship and prosperity has given rise to poverty of relationship balancing is one of challenging principles therefore moderation some or other, try to bring that moderation where and therefore this Pitri Paksha, right? The purpose of Pitri Paksha is to create that harmony between the smallest number, Putri or Poputra, 
you know, the grandchild to Pitris, that connection through feelings, through Shastras, through festivals coming together in their villages. So that is judiciousness, moderation. Yukta Hara, Yukta Vihara, Yukta Chestu Sakarma Suhita Sopnava Bodhasya. What a profound definition Krishna gave. A profound definition of happiness given by Yudhishthira Maharaj. Very simple. Yaksha asked him, what is happiness? There are many answers for happiness, but Yudhishthira's answer is one of the most profound, simple answer. He said, when you are able to eat from your home, garam garam khana, apne hi mata, apne hi patni, apne hi bhen ke haato se kha sakoge. Large number of people are poverty stricken in regards to not getting to eat from the touch of their mother, their wives and their sisters. Right? In the smaller towns, people get shocked to hear this. Achha? They don't. They never get to eat from their mother's hand. Poverty. Right? If there is yukta hara, yukta vihara, yukta chesta so karma so, Krishna's definition of yoga. Courage, wisdom, moderation, and fourth is nyaya, judiciousness. Now, nyaya, we are not talking about justice. You know, nyaya here is logic. Justice is logical. So whenever that justice is logical, what does it do? And therefore, that logic was presented by Narad Muni in the Mahabharata. I did not complete that part. Earn, grow. Only when it grows, it is maintained. Third is enjoy. Enjoy the resources what has come to you. And part of the enjoyment is share with others. When a capitalistic person becomes dharmic, by being charitable, by being dhanashura, providing the resources, I sponsor your education, I sponsor your marriage, I do this. He is not doing any great compassionate work. He is simply stabilizing himself. He is allowing the subordinates from being envy to be grateful. He is changing the consciousness of their heart. He is changing the mood of their heart which is beneficial to him. Right? It is beneficial to him. Change from envy to Kritajnata. From changing from envy to Kritajnata is the crux of the matter. Therefore, all samskara and sanatan dharma constituted and therefore Yudhishthir was asked by that yaksha, what is the ultimate destination of life in regards to this world, in regards to the future also. And Yudhishthira Maharaj said, dan. When you give dan, you are making yourself stable. Like somebody was complaining to me, you know, living in America. I said, I have nobody. You know, my parents came in 1970s, not from a Gujarati family. He said, I am alone. Now I realize that I have nobody other than my parents. What will I do? I said, simple. If you have parents, if your family back in wherever they are from, try to connect and use your resources to sponsor education for them. Empower them. There is a selfishness, future selfishness for you. But the present selflessness, when you invest in these people, they will invest in you. If not, everybody, at least one will stand by in your old age. Oh, you know, my uncle, my chacha, this to me. And therefore, Swadharma and the Loka Sangraha, which was presented by Krishna, gives rise to greater desire to expand your wealth. I suggest for people, those who have not seen the book Money and Mahabharat, all these concepts have been covered. Charity, compassion is not driven by selflessness. It is driven by dharmic swartata. There is a benefit for me. 
and therefore krishna when he talks about swadharma and loka sangraha that swadharma and loka sangraha is a profound concept in conclusion somebody said money is like a manure money is like a manure when you stack it it stinks but when you spread the manure when you spread the wealth you know by investing in people's life in a meaningful way what does it do it benefits them it helps them to empower it helps them to grow and it is given by the dharmic person right if it is given by a dharmic person then their gratitude is driven by gratitude to god also so that they can further the cause and therefore wealth and mind is connected to all this principle what we have discussed even if 5% people of the world implement this that gives rise to greatest satya yuga even in kali yuga thank you very much any questions or comments thank you very much prabhu ji uh, truly uh, giving equals uh, receiving uh, uh so we have uh, mohar uh, prabhu who would like to ask you a question uh mohar prabhu can you please unmute yourself and ask your question hari krishna dhanyawad pranam prabhu am i audible to you yes a little louder yes sir. um uh, in my childhood i received physical and psychological maltreatment from the ancient schooling system where just radhan maharaj give a visit at you know i'm not just being uh, precise for some reason due to the gathering now it happened 12 years back and since then i received bitter flashbacks and experienced mental agony due to the invisible internal scars caused during that time and it wasn't sexual abuse first i make sure that uh, the abuse would happen to me as a child i was only 10 back then now i'm 22 uh, i undergo through some mental agony uh, and i didn't even know about that this is called a uh, trauma this is called trauma attack actually i heard your lecture your lecture and gorgopal prabhu's lecture and then i came to know this is this is not just something happening and would be happening throughout my life and i won't be taking any step i am trying my level best but still i get the agony i still undergo through all kind of emotions which you know i'm speaking and my voice is not breaking because i just can remember my mom and dad leaving me at the at the gate of that place in west bengal i've been born in the same society where you are belonging from and uh, this kind of thing that could happen which couldn't even remember i mean we couldn't even think about that the authority ledger demand and all certain things happened thankfully that the authority were banned this ashram which was next to goshala or opposite to shruti bhavan i'm not trying to mention its name uh, so yeah i undergo to immense mental agony and nothing helps nothing else except connecting to one of my friend my counselor Prangopinath Prabhu who is over there helping uh, in the technical digital thing doing. So, of course, uh, speaking with him a little bit helps me to uh, to handle that burden. But still, I, you know, it's excruciating pain. It's excruciating pain. Nothing just helps. So that's what my first concern is. I I don't want to be stuck in this kind of situation. But is it over the time it will get better? and second thing is prabhu ji due to staying over there due to staying over there my academic thing i couldn't develop in my academic uh, academic side all we were taught was the spiritual thing doing the yagya and other things and i couldn't continue over there for some reason which i just mentioned you for some child abuse happened to me my father only kept you over there for one year and we had to come back to calcutta i'm from calcutta so uh, so after coming back to kolkata i couldn't bounce back i couldn't i couldn't bounce back in the sense i couldn't do well in my academics 
So after not doing well in my academics over the years, a condition has been created that is not trying my level best. Now due to involvement of Gaur Gopal Prabhu, I somehow or other cracked my ICSC and ISC, which is my 10th board and the 12th board. Now that happened just because of Gaur Gopal Prabhu and it's still being happening due to that individual, Gaur Gopal Prabhu, who said, just be grateful to your parents who have given so much to you. Now, of course, they have given so much to me, but it still keeps on ringing in my head that when that bad thing happened to me, they never ever spoke about the same to the authority. They never ever complained to the authority. I keep on creeping. I keep on complaining. I keep on saying that to myself. And what the thing I'm trying to say to you, you mentioned just now, uh, Mother Lakshmi resides with them who does the endeavor, who has creativity, who... Uh, and the details follows. I have the Mahabharat book. I mean, Mahabharat means the money and Mahabharat book. And I read those details. Am I audible still? Yes, yes, yeah. So I read the book. Uh, but what happens to me, Prabhu, is uh, when it comes to practicing my skills, I get carried away by the distractions. And today's distraction, millennials' distraction is maybe some people say they have something to me and keep. I keep on remembering that or sometimes wasting the time remembering things that uh, they have said. Yeah, exactly. And then I remorse. Why did I waste my time throughout the day? And I don't have a sufficient energy to put in my academics or in something which I truly love. I want to use academic as my stepping stone to get what I truly love to do, my aspirations, my passions. Now, whatever that may be, what is not letting me to to give my 200% best is the distractions. I'm, be, I'm getting carried away by them. And lack of initiative will, will eventually lead to me feeling miserable. And it does. Every moment I, I regret, I remorse. Why don't I give my best? I, have my, I find it truly that I have willpower, but I hold on. I hold back that willpower. I know that when I do something, even I'm passing my grades fine that's fine that's also one of my willpower but i have more that i'm holding back i'm not giving my 200 percent willpower can i can i answer can we do something yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. i finished thank you i'm sorry to like you no, know, no. no no it's a it's a i can understand you know because i know some of the students have gone through this two things one is you need a personal, we can talk personally, separately. I'm willing to, you know, talk to you personally, separately. And, Prabhu, uh, how can I, can, can you just, uh, can you just help me to do yeah. it uh, through, uh, through yeah, you, That uh, uh, Priya Chaitanya Prabhu will help you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And secondly, one thing you have to remember as we were explaining you know, put yourself in the story of Draupadi. Right? Her drama, you know, was such a drama, exactly what you're talking about, surrounded by all good people, husband, Bhishma, Drona, Kripacharya, everybody was there, but still, even the story that the failed attempt itself was very traumatizing. Hmm? It was itself is a very traumatizing. It required Sri Krishna to give her the promise that I'll punish the culprit. Hmm? So it requires the justice and self-empowerment. Both things are required. And for your information, you should know that your past doesn't have the power to control your present and your future. It can it can impact you for some time. You know, it can create some reversal. But it doesn't have the power to bind your future. You know, you have the courage, you have the power, you have the articulation to rise beyond because again, whether our Shastras it is said, Aham Brahmasmi. Right? What does it mean? Aham Brahmasmi means, I am Brahat. 
I am powerful. I am full of knowledge. I am full of eternality. I am full of uh, happiness. Right? That is my constitutional nature. And this trauma, what I went through, is real, 100%. It is not that it is illusory. It is a reality. So with the help of my constitutional nature, I need to beat this conditional nature of going through this real, true trauma and shine forth. Again, those who, those who come from the rebels and prove that actually it is possible to grow. And that is what Narad Muni, that is what Lakshmi Devi, that is what all our Shastras are teaching us. You know, I have a pain, but my pain cannot become a victim card because a victim card is a drug which doesn't help me to grow. That doesn't mean that I don't have, I am not a victim. I am a victim, but I should not use that card because that doesn't help us to grow. Empowerment is required. You need a personal support system to grow. And we will discuss that separately. Okay? Yes, yeah, surely. Surely, Prabhu. Yeah. And the second one, what you say, what I said was uh, the that I cannot push myself. Uh, the my, I do not use my full willpower, get distracted by the uh, either the today's social media and other things. I get carried away and do not in practice, what I truly love. I think uh, that's what I'm saying. It has a, it has the foundational, once the foundational program is dealt with, then your ambition okay. for the right reason will grow. Just like I said, you know, like Chanakya Pandit says, growing and growing and growing is not a vessel. It is not an addiction because if you know the purpose of why I need to grow, then that growth is a dharmic one. That is a spiritual one. That will also happen. Okay. Okay, I will take your guidance, direct guidance. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Can I request uh, Pinkiji to please ask a question? Yeah. Yes, sorry, Krishna Prabhu. Okay. Thank you very much for your enlightening session. <clears throat> um, just a quick question. You mentioned about three uh, realities of life, and I think I missed the third one. Would you please repeat the third one for me? Yeah, desire, action, and accepting this too as the reality. Sorry, Accept accepting it. Yeah, accepting it. Right. So how do we relate this to the previous two as in desire and action? So we have the desire, we do the action to um, fulfill that desire, for example. Hmm. what does, How does acceptance relate to the other two? Then? Because sometimes people think, oh, this is my you know, limitation. This is my conditioning. I am doing, I'm not supposed to do. People deny these two realities. If you accept right. these two realities, then you move forward because they are part of your existence. You cannot, you cannot say no, no, no. This is I'm, I'm weak, I'm, I'm materialistic, I'm not good person, and therefore I'm doing it. Therefore, I mentioned whether you are materialistic or spiritualist, whether evolved or not evolved, these three realities has to be, you know, taken as the the existential reality is the reality of the Srishti. It's a reality of Prakriti. It is not a one individual's reality. While dying also people have certain aspiration. You know, my dead body has to be cremated here only. We need to use this word. You have to feed hundreds of people. While dying also people express their desire. Right? So mm -hmm. making healthy acceptance and not becoming obsessed about that Again, judiciousness in regards to acceptance. Right. Okay, that answers my question. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, Sayak uh, Ji, can you please uh, ask your question? Uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah, Prabhuji, you mentioned uh, that uh, the point where uh, Lakshmi Ji uh, is uh, having a conversation yes. and she's she's mentioning that one has to be greedy in terms of uh, then Lakshmi ji stays in that it has to be I mean progressively yeah so my question is that uh, but greed in one sense is accepted as one of the anarthas, one of that that progress I didn't say people. greed I said satis not satisfied not, not satisfied, satisfied is not necessarily being greedy. It could be ambitious for the right reason. 
so in that sense probably if uh, if i am i am not mentally satisfied i'm coming mm-hmm. to that point only that if uh, i am not mentally satisfied mm-hmm. can that affect my uh, the present spiritual sadhana because if i'm not mentally satisfied then my uh, daily sadhana can be affected based on that yes very much because if you are not judiciously imagine if you are not satisfied judiciously there is a reason for you not to be satisfied then naturally that will affect your spirituality if you are illogically dissatisfied then also it will affect your spirituality that means because you are not using your spiritual intelligence to understand whether this is judicious or not again as the mother ji asked that question about you know what is the third principle accept that there are desire accept that there are actions and that acceptance itself is a very important principle you know if you are supposed to be a you know something tangible you have certain skills and if you have not used that they will haunt you they'll say why you did not use it you know i'll try to be artificially satisfied when i have something you know if you are supposed to be the chief minister if you are supposed to be something great and you chose to be come something very small that very capacity which you have not used that will haunt you to be used you know when a, when a, when a rishis have given you knowledge that you learned so much and if you don't doubt it as proper said doubt all your propensity when you don't doubt all your propensity those very propensity become toxicity and then they come at the wrong time saying that you did not use me so therefore dharma artha kama these are these are not simply words these are the profound reality which are the pillars of our existence right and therefore the panchakosha annamaya pranamaya manomaya vigyanmaya the vigyanmaya kosha begins with ahankar i know it is related to my conditional nature what is my ahankar my ahankar is that i am born in this family i have this background and therefore i need to use this background or oh, this is my background i need to transcend this background whether you have a bad background or a prosperous background if you have a prosperous background you have a tendency to take it for granted and become lethargic right it is not that only bad background is an obstacle rather those who have lot of resources they are so useless in regards to valor courage bargain you know handling on their own because they are pampered by their parents to such an extent their existence has become very weak right on the other hand somebody but if you have the right understanding you can use that opportunity to use your resources to again take a platform and grow and if you don't have a good background then you don't have to lose anything you can be courageous krishna told this to arjun he said those who don't have anything they are the fierce people to fight because they have nothing to lose like one businessman he said he said i grew up because i had all the time to take risk in life because i have nothing to lose you know what else can happen to me i may lose everything but there is nothing to lose so why not try to gain as much as possible so therefore that's that attitude of wanting to grow beyond my good conditioning or bad conditioning is an important principle and that is what lakshmi devi is speaking to rukmini who asked that question where do you reside okay thank you very much prabhu ji yeah. uh, so so we'll stop here hello yes prabhu ji yes prabhu ji yeah thank you for your kind attention yes next thank week you. we have a uh, you want to announce that Uh, prabhu ji i'm not aware of the uh... yeah, next week we'll have a session on uh, shakti tatva on occasion of the navratri utsav 7:30 tuesday 17th october arrest recording stopped